to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. It's football time. Ooh, I almost forgot. I wasn't sure. You hit me with you hit me with the double pointer. No, no, no. That was a fifteen yard penalty on me. No, no, that's why it was a double pointer. It was fifteen definitely... yard penalty? Not a fifteen yard penalty. You fifteen were... yard penalty? Not a fifteen yard penalty. If you see what I did there, one's a gun, one's a pointer. According to the NFL. First down. <laughs> I find that to be rather ridiculous what's going on in the NFL. Yeah. I, look, I mean I understand the I the understand inten- the I get point. the intentions, but Execution right now is real poor. If I'm signaling first down, yeah. For those listening at home, I was giving Mike the signal to make sure he got the it's football time. Yes, because this week is flying by. I don't blame you. I barely comprehended that it was already football again. But um, I'm probably demonetizing our YouTube video right now. <laughs> uh, welcome in, <laughs> one and all. Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers, back with you. Deucer's Alley, full, full of deuce. We've got Al Borland, Papa oh. Josh, the Falcon in the building. I look, listen. You guys are the producers, and I, if you're watching the YouTube, you're you're on the camera. There is a major lighting issue right now in Deucer's Alley. There is like Al Borland in the in the pitch black darkness. Yeah. Then that- there's the glistening helm of Papa Josh, but then like the Falcon is like fully lit. That's his white shirt really accenting that. Is that what that is? I yeah. don't know about that. I, I feel like I'm seeing a he's lot of our, good. A lot of our. Li- I mean, he is the youngest. He's feeling himself over there. Yeah, he's got the stash. All right, that's enough. Forehead's time. a little greasy. Um, that's the light. That's the light. All right, we have uh, NFL news to talk about today. Starts the week. Mike and I with you today, and we'll get into the matchups. So I'm excited. It should be fun. We've got big decisions to be made. We want to help you win your week. You can watch the show. If we're still allowed to be on YouTube after my illicit <laughs> obscene obscene start to the show, uh, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click the bell, you'll check out Sunday Live. I'm gonna be joining you remotely this Sunday for Sunday Live. Making it happen. So okay. What's the cackles right. going on? Well the there? cackles they turned Oh now the lights off. He turned the light off and left him in the dark. All right. See this you later. This is the perfect start to the show. <laughs> Fixed it. <laughs> Yeah, no, you did. You did. Um, d- you should take care of the guy next to you as well, and then there'll just be one deucer left. Yeah, there you go. I apologize. This is quite the start to the episode. I know we're going to talk about some football. We're going to do it right now. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Oh, now all the, the lights just continue to go off. No, Deuce's Deuce's Alley's Alley's shutting closed down. closed for business. Yeah. Oh no, Jeremy's still good. Yeah. Double the double down. the light on the on the one producer left. The 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 true slowdown for almost missing its football time is I saw what time it was, and I remembered, oh crap, I have the wrong defense. Like I have not put a claim in for the defense, so I was trying to get one in. Oh man, Indiana Jones style right under that door, grabbed my hat and got it in, brother. So you were in the middle of putting a quick waiver claim yes. in, picking up the, the Tampa I, Bay Buccaneers I, defense? That was that was just like the the best one I could find with no yeah, time Spencer left. Spencer Rattler and Yep. Yeah. Not not a bad idea. I got a snake, man. <laughs> that was close. Well, congratulations, Mike. This also, is, if you didn't see the graphic, we got it updated. Good work. Yeah. By, good I by got the graphic. A snake, man. <laughs> Spencer so. Rattler bringing the drop back. All right, okay. Somebody wrote in and said yesterday, they go, that drop was, I hated that drop. What? They're like, I hated that drop, and I was so happy it was gone, and somehow they brought it back. <laughs> and you, you got to blame Spencer Rattler yeah. for that. So, Todd Downing is taking over play calling duties for the Jets from Nathaniel Hackett. Oh, boy. This is the most. Oh, boy. This is the most encouraging news of everything that happened with the Jets this week to me. Because you felt it was bad with Hackett? I did not feel like the fix was going to be made just by transitioning from Robert Sala. I felt like the you needed the offensive side of the football to be remedied. Whether Todd Downing will be that, I don't know. But here's the truth. 
and by saying it out loud is going to take it away from me as an opportunity in any of my leagues to do it. But Brees Hall is the 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 player you need to go get. Okay. You go get him now. Players that have him are disappointed. They're not going to give him away. We're not crazy. But if you can get him, go get him now. That's what I'm going to tell you. Because I think that this offense is going to change for the better because Nathaniel Hackett is not the answer. And so uh, this was he was a middle-of-the-pack offensive coordinator with the Titans, but they also went 12-4, and four, I believe, that year, um, or 12-5, and five, and they ran the ball successfully. It was Derrick Henry. you got to get Brees Hall going in this offense. I know the offensive line is a problem, but this is a schematic choice as well. And uh, so the, it was also matchups. I mean, the you Brees Hall is supposed to be one of those running backs where matchups be darned. It doesn't matter. He's still going to have himself a good game. I mean, that was Denver and Minnesota. I mean, who at this point, like who's a scarier defense for I mean, but Jets not yeah. not counting them, but like for the Jets to play, that's that's about as bad as it gets. So But yeah, that we could have a could have a buy low opportunity for Brees Hall here. Well, and the big story yesterday was that Nathaniel Hackett was about to get demoted yeah. for Todd Downing, and then you know five minutes later they changed the head coach. But and they stole that from us. They did steal I that from that us. Story. I mean, I don't, it was fun. I I think that Aaron Rodgers is is he's done what he's done to affix himself as a villain when possible. But I don't think he had a lot of say in what happened. I really don't. Michael Pittman. Hey. Guess who's on my League of Record team, everybody? Michael Sitman, because multiple weeks, back injury. Um, so IR is a possibility, everybody. I what? It, thank you. We built this city. What is happening? Why is everyone going on the IR? Well, I mean, it gives them an extra roster spot. I'm just like these. <laughs> back... In my day, these were men, <laughs> and they were hurt, and they played. You know, there's a lot of injuries when Mike Wright is tempted to go to the back in my day, which is not an often occurrence. Listen, Josh Downs is the elite talent at wide receiver on this team, and I do mean that. I think Josh Downs is a better wide receiver than Michael Pittman. I really believe that. I mean, very different very areas, different, areas, very different. different types of wide receivers. But this, to me, gives you clarity. This gives you the confidence. This gives you the, the weak in week out ability to start Josh Downs regardless of quarterback. Michael Pittman being sat down, you know, Alec Pierce. That's what I was that dart ask. throw becomes a higher probability of, of hitting the board. And Josh Downs, you know, we're going to talk about the game today. I like Josh Downs a lot. I like what the, the team is saying about him. They've come out and just talked about his work ethic and his the fact that he's advanced his game so much. Aiden O'Connell and Spencer Rattler are getting starts this week. So Aiden O'Connell for the Raiders. They figure out the uh, midweek, yeah, mid-year. The competition's over. Spencer Rattler will get the start against the Bucks. I did love his comment about the fact that Chris Olave is different and my plan is to get him the ball as often as possible. That's what we're talking about, Spence. This has Good happened for you. with backup quarterbacks. They have and the come backup in, wide receiver. And they, well, <laughs> they, they come in and they target – they hyper target sometimes, yeah. and this could be really good. It wasn't good with Derek Carr. It was okay. It was not, okay. Not for Olave. For, for three games, it was okay. Gus Edwards did not practice. Uh, it's Wednesday, but I'll, again, keep your eye on it. Malik the, Neighbors doing better. Yeah, he didn't practice. Still a DNP right now. Don't love that because that was it was a Thursday night game. Am I remembering that right? It was. And so it was. You have... Ten days so far. You can have a little bit of of optimism that he's going to make it back for the following game, but he did not. And now we're at Wednesday of the next week and he's still not practicing. Do you have any... Like, if you had to place a bet on whether he's out there? I I can't even do that. It, the, the nice thing is, if he plays, you just put him right back in. But you better be at least preparing to have an alternate. Devin Singletary's trending in the right direction was the report that I read. Still limited in practice. Zach Moss didn't practice, so Chase Brown, Mike, you brought him up. He was high on our waiver list. And then Audric Estime of the Broncos was designated to return from injured reserve. 
Yeah, this one is not as exciting because Javante Williams, quietly, if you have not been paying attention, which I think the only people really paying attention to Javante are those that have him on a roster. No, you're not seeing him. You're not like, oh, I'm worried about Javante. Things have been better. Things have been a little bit better for him. So the the estimate takeover is probably on hold right now. But it, it it's still an, it's a long season, and I think that is still a possibility. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We will talk about some more practice reports in the matchups today. But first. Starts of the week. So I just talked about him. So let's start at running back. I I, I have Brees, right, Brees Hall go. is my start of the week. Okay. This was not a player that you thought could ever make this segment of the show. But right now, the level of despair associated with Brees Hall and his yards per carry and all of that. Yep. Buffalo's the matchup you want. Um, despite how horrendous it seemed compared to expectation, he's still the RB sixteen on the year. Um, you've got that little bump, the new head coach and the new identity on offense. And I think getting Brees Hall going is going to be a priority. I think is one of the reasons why Nathaniel Hackett's not causing uh, calling plays anymore. Not causing problems anymore? Yeah, uh, so I'm going <laughs> Brees Hall. Uh, I'm going to go with Tony Pollard against the Colts, and it's kind of – you could just say it's a blanket state, statement almost for the Titans against the Colts because it's a great matchup. But highlighting Tony Pollard here, playing the Colts, it's been fantastic for all running backs, not named DeAndre Swift. Pollard, look, three top 24 weeks, nearly 70% of the running back attempts, and a 15% target share. All this 1A, 1B, hoot nanny, throw that in the garbage because Tony Pollard has been the guy, and he's been excellent, and he's in a plus matchup. All right, let's go to quarterback then. I'm going to stay in the flames. Start of the week, Kirk Cousins. All right. Uh, we just saw Caleb Williams have a monstrous game against Carolina. It is a great matchup. And uh, I'm not sure you knew this. I mean, we had our fantasy draft redo. But Drake London and Darnell Mooney are both in the top 15 at wide receiver through five weeks. Mike, you made uh, you made a point of talking about Darnell Mooney, watching every clip of him. Yeah, he was an offseason sleeper. In Chicago, and you believed that he could come into Atlanta and make a difference. 16 targets last week. The offense is currently – it's Kirk Cousins. It's the passing game. And Carolina has the, the weaponry – now with Andy Dalton sure, to actually keep up in the game. So I think uh, Kirk Cousins, you can stay in the flames and start him uh, without any hesitation. And then I'm going Caleb Williams against the, the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jags right now through this, this short season are giving up 7.9 points above expectation. If you don't know what that means, that means think of what a quarterback is scoring on average and give them an extra eight fantasy points. Uh, and that's the worst right now in schedule adjusted points by over two points a game, which is that's wild to see at this point. They've been so bad. It's been very hot, very cold for Caleb Williams, but when it's hot, multiple 300 yard games already for the rookie. And I think that we're, uh, I think we're going to go back to back here with Caleb good games. It's not the fairest thing to do, but with a rookie, you can do it. His last three games. If you just pace that out over the year, Caleb Williams is sitting at 4,600 passing yards. That's great. 28 touchdowns and only 11 interceptions. Um, his QB rating's been 104 over that stretch. He's still rushing for 300 yards, and he's got two top 10 finishes in fantasy. It was. So it went from despair to like, oh, okay. That's honestly the. I've uh, struggled a bit with Caleb Williams. The first two weeks were so bad. He completed 48% of his passes in week one. He only hit 93 yards, then 174 yards against Houston. You got to, you should be able to do better. He had 44 on the ground, but it's that, that's the imprint of, especially when you have Caleb Williams doing that and Jaden Daniels doing what he's doing. You're like, oh, well, Jaden is awesome and Caleb is not. But Caleb has been, uh, two of the last three games have been excellent, and I'm, I'm going to stick with him one more week. All right, uh, and, then, and then he gets a bye week in Washington and Arizona. So, yeah, could, I, think, things could look a lot better here. Can I borrow a pair? Oh, you need some pants? Oh, brother, I do. 
Steel underpants. Who's this for? Well, look, if you pick anybody on oh. if you pick anybody on the Cleveland Browns. You, you better you better have a diaper inside of that titanium underpants. Yeah, I mean, so my wide receiver start of the week. You gotta soak some stuff up. It's Amari Cooper. It's <laughs> thank <laughs> you. It's Amari Cooper who is still number four in the National Football League in targets. We said forty five percent of his targets have been uncatchable. You're facing Philadelphia, who have struggled on the back end. They're actually starting a new nickel corner, another white guy in the house on the secondary. All right. Um, the Browns are going to be passing all game long. And to me, Amari Cooper, it's a priority for this team to, look, you need to use him if you want to win ball games, and you need to use him if you want to showcase him for a trade. Like, if you think you're going to yeah. get Amari Cooper out the door, that's why he's number four in targets. They have just missed on – I mean – Two weeks ago, they had an 82-yard touchdown called back on a phantom holding call. He had a monster game in week two. Amari Cooper's targets, when the when you stack those up, I know that the source of the targets is not good. But, look, I mean, Malik Neighbors does not have a top 15 source of targets, but it comes to fruition that he has a big game more often than not. Amari Cooper is going to have a big game this week. I'm going with – and he's hungry for more player of this week. Jalen Tolbert against Detroit. It's a plus matchup. We've seen Tolbert two straight weeks with a 20-plus percent target share. He is their full-time number two wide receiver, not target, uh, for the Dallas Cowboys while Brandon Cooks is out. And, it, that like, the Bengals uh, – or, or, I'm sorry, look, the – Tolbert here is just in a, in such a good situation of – the, the the steady rise that we have seen over this season and finally coming through with the the promise of the third round pick and I think that he can go right from the waiver wire right into your starting lineup. As this a flex. is the second week in a row where my hungry for more was then picked as a start of the week by one of you guys. It worked out really well for Brian Thomas, so I'm hoping Mike, this is uh, a pattern and we can get a big game from Tolbert because yeah. I am starting him in <laughs> in a couple places. All right, what do we got? Tight end. Yeah, yeah, we do, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to go with the invisible to the fantasy world, Cole Komet. Um, you are blowing my mind right now. I am because of the fact that, oh, that he's the tight end six on the year. <laughs> well, yeah, because he had that 20-point game. But yeah, I mean, he is. You can't but, take that away from him. But who has 20-point games at tight end? I mean, Cole Komet. Cole Komet, that's who. That's right. He's on the field 85 to 90% of the time. So that's a check mark. For uh for a tight end in this economy, big plays they are in the repertoire for for Cole Komet, and get this Jacksonville who they're facing this week they're coming off of three straight games giving up a ton more points to the tight end position that whole points over expectation number for the tight uh, for the tight end so um I think Cole Komet is a really solid start probably every week but this week especially and I'm going with Trey McBride thinking that the game it's we're getting there. We are getting there with Trey McBride. It has just been steady, but we haven't had the the game of that you drafted him for. Yet. That that is definitely what's being felt by the fantasy community yeah. right now because we had Monday Punday Trey Mc divorce uh, be, <laughs> being submitted. No. So people what? are and this and, and so when I got that, I looked at the the box score. He was fine, and he was fine. But that's the thing you didn't draft him to be fine. Yeah, yeah. But six for fifty three is. I know it, that's perfectly fine. But I, look, but yeah, you, this is a big endorsement here. Taking on the Green Bay Packers, uh, the Packers are slightly worse against tight ends than wide receivers, and uh, the uh, the tight ends have done again. They've they, they've done okay. Titans, Vikings, the Rams were all multiple points over expectation versus Green Bay, and it was right off the concussion. And he had the injury designation going into the week, right into nine targets. And I mean, you had the weirdness of an entire drive deleted by a 50-yard rushing touchdown by Kyler Murray. Those are some yards that that team McBee certainly could have got in on a 26% target share on the year. Again, we haven't gotten the big game, but the numbers for McBride are are they're still very good in terms of peripherals. We just need it to hit. All right, those are our starts of the week for this week, and um, we'll take a break and get into – this week's matchups. All right, it's time to jump in. This is what, week six, Mike? We're cruising. We are. 
Uh, before I jump in, I do want to uh, remind everybody they can use the Ultimate Dashboard to optimize their lineup. Go to jointhefoot.com, sign up to support the show, get an extra episode every week, get access to our Discord channel, get access to the Stream Finder tool and all of the resources uh, that we have available in our premium tools and resources. And then, of course, the Ultimate Dashboard with a custom waiver wire sheet, spot starts. It's all built out for your league, and that's jointhefoot.com. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Okay, you ready? Let's go back to London, Mike. You sound like you're from London. Jacksonville, one and four, taking on the Chicago Bears, who are three and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Bears minus two. The over-under is 44 and a half. We just talked about several pieces of this game you know, Caleb Williams, your start of the week. DJ Moore, it's been it's been great. It was interesting watching DJ Moore and the press conference. Did you see his comments on Caleb I Williams? I did not. It was it was very funny. I mean, DJ Moore had a big week. He he basically said Caleb Williams right now is being a little bossy. Um if they don't do like, like if, Springsteen? if they don't if they don't do exactly what they need to do in the running routes and practice or on the field. He's letting him know oh, about. It. He's letting okay. him know about it. And and DJ Moore even made the comment of like he's like, "Whoa, whoa, you can't talk to me like that. I'm older. <laughs> I'm the older brother." But then at the same time, he was just commending the leadership and saying like he has been telling them what they need to do. It was good to hear. DeAndre Swift has been awesome for two straight weeks, Mike. Is it continue against Jacksonville who is 27th this year against the run? It freaking better. <laughs> like the the it just comes down to uh, you know, for the big game, it's if they get down by the goal line, they've kind of been splitting opportunities uh, for Swift and Roshan Johnson, and DeAndre Swift continues to uh, show the world that that is not his strength. So we have just pulling it up here, four four attempts inside the five this past week against Carolina. Four of them, one touchdown. Like that. Come on, brother. We we got we got to get that we got to get that number up. But Roshan could vulture a touchdown or two away. But uh, but overall, DeAndre Swift is a strong play. So, DJ Moore, you're confident. Swift, Williams, Colcomet is a start of the week as well. On the other side of the football, we saw some signs of life from the offense, Brian Thomas Jr. This might be a tougher week, though. It's going to be really tough. The Bears are just – they stifle the passing game. They make every possession very difficult on you. And if there's one area where I feel like Jacksonville struggles tremendously, it's stringing – you know, they can make a big play. I mean, Brian Thomas Jr. had a monstrous play down the field. But putting a bunch of first downs together, getting all the way down the field, it, it can be it can be difficult. And um, so I would temper your Brian Thomas expectations. You're still going to play him. Yeah, Brian Thomas is in for me. If Kirk – I wouldn't try I'm Kirk not, I'm not no. going to force Kirk into my lineup. And then the – what do we do here? Evan Ingram, limited practice. we got a limited practice on they a think Wednesday. think he's going to play. So that would especially – maybe he's on a snap count. I don't know. But that would – when him and Christian Kirk are both playing, it tends to take away opportunities from Kirk. So it's just – would you put Evan Engram right back into a starting lineup? Most lineups, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you're going to take that chance. He's got that connection with Lawrence. ETN's been limited uh, in practice with the shoulder. Tank Bigsby coming off a season high in snaps. It seems like a really tough situation right now. Like, yes, especially in this game. If you have ETN and you drafted him, you're probably playing him no matter what. But Tank Bigsby's the flex decision that I think is really hard. I And I don't know if I would do it in this one. No, I don't think I would do it either. I don't know if you have some names that you would want I'm to try I'm there. trying to look at like realistic options. It was like, like okay, for or Tank. So Bucky Irving. Against the Saints or Tank Bigsby? I'd probably play Bucky. Yeah, that's where I lean as well. Um, Travis Etienne or Tank Bigsby is the number two most popular start set decision. Uh, I have been the the loudest about the concerns about Tank Bigsby. Actually, could he be good? And he's looking fantastic of taking work against from Etienne. I'm still playing Etienne over Tank Bigsby, though. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like 
credit is due to you on two situations that I didn't believe. <laughs> it was the there was the players I'm embarrassed to love. Well, but you, I'm not embarrassed anymore. No, I mean you, you. I'm not afraid anymore. You still believe Tank Bigsby could impact ET, and you still believe that Bucky Irving could impact Rashad White. Yep. So you were right, and I was wrong on that. Um, I'm attractive. You're not. I. <laughs> <laughs> you're good looking. Yeah. I'm not attractive. <laughs> that's what it. <laughs> uh, said Norm Macdonald. No, that's Happy Gilmore. Oh, that's right. That's right. I had some dirty work scenes showing up in in my head. All right, Arizona's two and three. They get a take on the Green Bay Packers. The DraftKings sportsbook line here: Packers minus five at home in Lambo. Over under is forty seven. This should be a good one. I think so. I think it'll be exciting. The Green Bay defense. We saw them kind of falter against Minnesota two weeks ago. They got they snuck by the Rams last week. Jordan Love has been pretty good. You know, on a play to play basis, sometimes there's been some some things, but he's providing the kind of uh offense numbers that you need. Josh Jacobs, Jaden Reed are your locks. Tucker Craft at this point has yeah, to oh, be Tucker has Kraft to be a lock. In. Yes, one hundred percent. But the wide receiver crew beyond that, Dontavian Wicks was the popular pickup last week. Uh, his target share is great, but his catch percentage is not. Correct. He has either been in the wrong place or dropped the ball or Jordan Love has missed him. He has, you know, he caught five of 13 targets two weeks ago, two of seven targets this past week. You know, it is a risk. I, I really think it's a risk with, with Dobbs coming back. Wicks is somebody that, like, I would play – You'd play Mooney over Wicks, right? Correct. I, I still think Tolbert Wicks is. Tolbert over Wicks? Your start of the week, I'd imagine. Yeah. That one's really close. Because I'm I still think Wicks is I'm playing him. If I if I picked him up against the Cardinals, who look, they're giving up their fourteenth right now, uh it against wide receivers. So right in the middle of the pack. The Dobbs coming back, it it, it creates a little bit of risk. But it's still, you know, it will be the three of them. Christian Watson was limited, by the way. Uh, so uh, pay attention to that. Because if, if somehow Watson is back for this game, that that makes things really sketchy if they're back to the four wide receivers. If it's the three of them, though, then I think they're all – they're even Dobbs, even, that one is a, more of a desperation because coming off the suspension of does he go right back into the role May, or – like, what do you? How do you evaluate this situation, Andy? Of gets suspended because he's upset with the team and he takes action of like, I'm just not going to go to practice. Is this a? Could he see some on-field punishment from the team, or is this the squeaky wheel of they're like, okay, hey Romeo, you're we need to get you the ball more. You're right. Yeah, I, I just view him the way I viewed Romeo Dobbs before this happened. I don't view it squeak, squeaky wheel or punishment. I think he just goes out there okay. and is on the field a ton, and it makes it hard to start Wicks and Dobbs and Watson and other players. I mean, we we have a good matchup. The Cardinals are not a great defense, but at the same time, it is risky. I mean, a Calvin Ridley or Dontavian Wicks. You I'll know, go. there's been some comments right now. I mean, the head coach. As long came as out. it's as long as it's Will Levis who was back at practice, I would go Calvin Ridley. Yeah, uh, there's some comments from them. We'll talk about that game. Kyler Murray, yes. Yep. James Conner, yep. Yep. Marvin Harrison, yep. Jair Jair Alexander has missed the last two games. He was limited on Wednesday. Harrison, you play. Trey McBride is your start of the week. So, not and, a lot of tough decisions beyond the no. wide receiver room in Green Bay. And, and Michael Wilson, if you're desperate. His usage has been really strong. The last three weeks, a 26%, 32%, and a 20% target share. Like, he is – he's seeing basically just as much work as as, uh, as Marvin. Marvin, yeah. The Colts are 2-3, and three and they take on those Tennessee Titans that we were just talking about who are sitting at 1-3. and three. Games in Tennessee, and the Titans are two-and-a-half-point home favorites, according to the DK Sportsbook. The over-under is 43 in this game. Not a lot. Pollard's your start of the week. Matching up against the 24th ranked Colts fantasy points allowed defense against running backs. Their defense across the board has been a sieve. And Brian Callahan, like I was just talking about, came out in the presser, said, I got to do a better job of finding ways to get Calvin the ball. We need his speed. We need his explosiveness more. I'm going to find a way to get him going. 
We've only got to see three games, really, with Calvin Ridley and Will Levis. So I know there's a lot of judgment out there. One of those games he was the wide receiver eight, and in two of them he was invisible. Mm -hmm. It's three games. We have a lot more games to play, right? So I would not – I'd be willing to play him in this game in a great matchup. I agree. And I would expect good things. The targets need to go up to be consistent. But I think Calvin Ridley will get them in this game as long as Will Levis is starting and they don't try to churn the entire game out on the ground. They've had a great defense. They have to be the most frustrated one and three football team <laughs> because they've been – Because Will Levis – by himself, lost multiple games. Yeah, he he's given games away where their defense has played well. They've gone down to the, you know, to the wire in a couple of them. They're they're a they're not a good team, but they're not one and three either. I think they're about a five hundred football team. And Will Levis just needs to figure things out. On the other side, I have a smattering of did not practices. I mean, we have yeah. uh, Michael Pittman's going to be out. Jonathan Taylor's not practicing. Anthony Richardson, we don't know if he's going to be back. They've said he's the starter when he's healthy. I, I'm presuming he'll play this week. How discouraged does that make you? Uh, well, I don't have to worry about Michael Pittman anymore, so I don't care. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the the notes here of like Jonathan Taylor didn't practice that one we expected, but Trey Sermon was a full DNP as well uh, for the Colts. He, you know, kind of split time with Tyler Goodson the past week, but Tyler Goodson will be the next man up, and this is the like I I just stashed him in our league of record just in case. Goodson? So, yeah. Did you? I did. Oh yeah, you did. You I picked, did. Look, the ma the up, matchup stinks. You picked up multiple multiple stashes. I yeah. saw you got Ty Johnson for Buffalo too, which you know is a just in case of James Cook. Yeah, with the toe, but like Tyler Goodson, should he be by himself, which he he won't of course, be by himself. They'll, they'll probably bring uh, Evan Hole up. The matchup is not great, but look, the volume should be there. That's, that's what you can say for this this matchup. Yeah, the Colts offense with Anthony Richardson going up against the Titans defense on the road, it's not a good matchup. No. If Richardson had slid out there last week, you could have played him against Jacksonville. This week feels like, you know, you've got an injury that he could, they could pull him back out of a game. Yep. I will not be surprised if they sit him down another week okay. at all. I think there's a chance Joe Flacco starts, and that makes him a – even in this matchup, Joe Flacco feels like a streaming candidate because he's a 303 type of guy. Tennessee is facing the largest target share to the slot receiver this year because Legereus Sneed is a shutdown guy on the outside. So I wouldn't be dart throwing Alec Pierce no matter who's the starter. Josh Downs is playable. Assuming he's good to go, because he was a did not practice. I know, too. I know. Man, the Colts are the Colts' hurting. offense right now is is beat up. Yeah, I, I definitely think Tennessee's going to win the ball game. All right, so we'll see. Houston, four and one, taking on the one four New England Patriots. The DraftKings sportsbook line here: ten, uh, the Texans minus six and a half. The over under is thirty eight. This game is going to be <laughs> my almost upset. <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. My reaction is not to the almost upset. My reaction is to the line is seriously like a, basically a touchdown. What What is your reaction to the almost upset? That, it's a six and a half point line for Houston. They're going to be without. I think that's perfectly fine. Without Nico Collins, Drake May will get his start for the first time. And I get that's where and the, the over under is 38. That's where the, the the spread is coming from because it's Drake May's first game, but the Pats' defense is it's fine. Like yes, it's, and they're at home. So I'm I'm that's wild. And without Nico Collins, I do worry about yeah C.J. Stroud and company moving the football consistently. We don't have Joe Mixon, so the running game has been non-existent without him. Um, I don't know what's wrong with Joe Mixon. I mean, I do. Oh, uh, is I do know his ankles hurt. It's his ankle, but I don't know how long this is going. How can day to day be four weeks? Right? We'll be four weeks. Yep. This will be a fourth. He played the first game, played the second game, got hurt, and missed three weeks, and this will be four. And if you've been rolling with Akers or Agumba Wale, Damian Pierce was back to a limited practice Yeah, on I don't Wednesday. want any of them. So I, this thing is, this is some mucky muck of, I don't, of sorting through who, does Damian Pierce, after missing that much time, go right back to being 
the actual number two? I don't know. This was, I'm, I'm going to avoid that backfield if I can. I am with you there. Now, everyone wants to see Tank Dell get it done. Is it going to happen? Because no Nico Collins means that it's Tank Dell, Stephon Diggs, and then Xavier Hutchinson, maybe some Dalton Schultz, who I think, by my eyeballs, is the slowest player in the NFL. <laughs> I have not. I have been utterly mesmerized at the lack of speed and acceleration time, from Dalton Schultz. I don't know. He he plays football like a man who already pooped his pants <laughs> and is trying to shuffle to a bathroom. And he can't find it. Is that is that too strong? I mean, like, uh, hey, look, we're we're here to give strong opinions. Dalton Schultz is not. A startable player. Dalton Schultz's yardage high this year is thirty four yards, and they've needed him in several games. Tank Dell missed the game. Yeah, we have we got Nico missing time. The doctor is out for the, the doctor. Weekend. The doctor needs new knees. I mean, it's been embarrassing. Watch him blow up this week, but no, I'm not starting him. Um the question for Tank Dell is Nico leaving almost immediately in that game against the Bills, and then Nico being or uh, I'm sorry, Tank Dell being four for 38 is very disappointing. Now, he still only played 68% of snaps in that game with Nico leaving at the beginning. Yeah, it's so that's weird. The we kind of uh, mused about what is what is wrong with Tank Dell from the injury to all these uh, of the other things. With the full week of the game plan being able to say Tank Dell, we need you to step up. There's optimism, but. And and he's he's going to I'm playing him as a flex, but is this the week it happens? I don't, Tavian I don't Wicks know. or Tank Dell? Oh my gosh! Just to make you feel bad. Oh man, if if Watson is out, I would play Wicks. What about Tank Dell or JSN? Oh man, uh, I mean that's tonight, right? Yep. You got to make that call now, San Francisco tonight. I think I'd I'd shoot for the upside of Tank Dell there. Ridley or Tank Dell? Ridley. Okay. There is a chance. I mean, this is what makes this game exciting. You get to watch Drake May play football. There, it could open up a door for Jalen Polk. It could open up a door for Demario Douglas. You know, who is kind of a quarterback's best friend near the line of scrimmage. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry has done things in the past. <laughs> Can he do them with Drake May? <laughs> we'll find out. Were you hope? Were you trying to re recall if Hunter's had more than one good game? Yes, it's only one. It's one. It always <laughs> it is. was great. And it when it happened, guess what we said? That he does this every year. Yeah, he 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 shines every once in a while. Oh, we thought that it was. Hey, maybe Hunter Henry's okay to start in this tight end landscape. And then they were like, Yeah, we're like probably not. No, no. What about it? what if we throw the ball to Austin Hooper? So uh, Al Al Borland here, you have the JSN Tank Dell decision. Yes, sir. And you are going with? We currently have Tank, and I think that's what we'll go with. Yeah, if you have it that way through about, what, 5 o'clock tonight, you're you're locked. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Tampa Bay is 3-2. and two. They take on the New Orleans Saints, who are 2-3. and three. The Saints cannot get another W to force Jason to shave his head. I don't, Ever since we put that on the wall, they can't get a W. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. And look, they're at home in this game. In the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buccaneers minus three. The over-under is 41. And I just have a hard time. See, that's – how how is this game just the Bucs are th favored by three against Spencer Rattler, who – what round was he drafted in? I'm going to try and find that real quick. He was a fifth-round draft pick. Okay, I'm not saying that Spencer Rattler can't be a good player. I'm just saying calling the game from the pedigree of where this person was drafted – Rattler, fifth rounder. Meet Drake May, the th what the third overall pick, and they're saying Houston's a t full touchdown. Tampa Bay's playing great. I don't know. Is, sorry. No, I, I'm getting it, off track. I get it. I mean, look, Spencer Rattler is a. I mean, it's his first game in the NFL. He gets to play at home. Tampa's a great defense. I'm with you. I think Tampa. I don't know how New Orleans scores enough points in this game. The Saints do have a defense that, you know, they kind of stick around. They make a big play here or there. They stuck around in the Kansas City game for a while, and then they didn't. But Spencer Rattler. I got a snake, man. <laughs> yes. I, you know, you can't feel confident at all with Rashid Shahid. He's not been practicing. He doesn't have his best friend. Shahid is like a bench to me. Olave, you can take the shot. 
Kamara, of course. But they're all they're a beat up team as well. They've got a lot of DNPs this week. I just feel like the Saints are are like try to try to stay away from players not named Alvin Kamara. Even even Olave is, is scary. Very scary. He is. I would still play him. I'd still play Olave. I wouldn't play him over Ridley, I don't think. Oh, that's a tough call. Tampa Bay's defense right now, it's not been good this year. If you want to make the argument that they'll handle things at home and Olave will have some big plays and Spencer Rattler will throw it to the right guy, you can make that argument. So Olave and Camara, though, those would be the only two you consider? Yeah. Uh, Camara, again, he didn't practice Wednesday. He, I don't think he practiced last Wednesday either. They're they give him Wednesday. That's out. probably just going to be how it will be for the season. But Kendra Miller was a full practice. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Okay. He's third in the depth chart. People are like, who's Kendra Miller? He's number one in in Dennis Allen's heart of hatred. Yeah, he's the only coach with a heart of hatred. <laughs> Dennis Allen went from, like, making Jason look dumb to two and three real quick. Yeah, so he is who we thought he was. So Baker Mayfield's a top five fantasy quarterback. Is he, is he this week against the uh, Saints' fifth-ranked defense against quarterbacks? They're giving up just... 12.3 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. Oh, laser Mayfield. I – so he he's only had one bad game, right? So he had a, a really bad game against the Denver Broncos. I – this is like the Sam Darnold decision of last week, and I, and I backed Darnold. I thought, he, I thought Darnold would be okay against the Jets. He was not. Uh, got that one wrong, so that's the – I think we're in the same exact scenario of a pocket passer who has been running very hot with touchdowns. Baker Mayfield has 11 passing touchdowns already. Like that's that's fantastic. So right I now, would, I would probably shy away from him. There might be better options on the waiver wire. He is at 14 in our consensus rankings this week. Yeah. It's, so ahead of him, Stroud, Fields, Cousins, Allen, Murray, Caleb Williams. Yeah, I think Caleb Williams is like that's the the question Caleb Williams and I'll, I'll throw Justin Fields in there as well they might be on your waiver wire if you had Baker are you just going to stay the course or would you put yeah, Baker would, on the, I'm I just not, don't think the upside is going to be tremendous on the road Baker. on the road and the Saints are probably going to try to control the football a little bit with the running game they already run the ball so much and the matchup of even if the Saints are able to run the ball they're I can't see them scoring a bunch of points no no, maybe that's why this line is where it's at now, yeah. the more we break this game down. Rashad White or Bucky Irving, if you had to start one? That's still You're Rashad, Rashad White. White. Yeah. And then Evans and Godwin? Yeah. We get to see a Lattimore-Evans uh, oh, battle, no. right? No. Mike Evans did talk about it, saying he's got to be more uh, more mature. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is they, if, you've, if you haven't seen them, like if you're newer to football, Mike Evans is like they have they have gotten into it. Yeah, they they have had a lot of very special matchups, and uh, I don't think Evans really gets the best of Lattimore very often. Am I wrong about that? No, I think that is correct. So Godwin might be the uh, he also gets Mike Evans kicked out of games. Yeah, he just gets under his skin. Yeah. Is there anybody else in this game you want to talk about? Uh let me see. Is no. Kate Otten or Jawan Johnson in play? Kate Otten is. Kate Otten, 44-plus yards in three straight games. He is out there all the time. And while it's not – Kate Otten is never a – it's not a ceiling play ever. If you're just like, dude, I got to get like five points from the tight end position, Kate Otten can do that. Yeah, Kelsey's on by this week, right? Yeah. So sometimes you, you need to do something something like get Zach Ertz, like you know, I, to start I, for Kelsey in I like, your dynasty league. I like Juwan Johnson. I like the player. I like what's happening with, with his usage, his route percentage, his snaps. Everything is going up. But with it being Spencer Rattler, I would go Kate Otten over Juwan. Let's take a break, and we'll come back and cover some more matchups. The Cleveland Browns are 1-4, and four, and they get to travel to Philly to take on the 2-2, two and two, coming off the bye, Philadelphia Eagles. And dear goodness, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Mike. Oh, my goodness. Eagles minus 9.5. The over-under is 42. That gives Cleveland 16 points. Philly has 26 implied point total. 
The Browns have not scored. I, I went all over some of this stuff in our uh, footcast, our bonus episode for the Foot Clan yesterday. They haven't scored 20 points in a game this year. Uh, Deshaun Watson is taking piles and piles of sacks. He's not completing downfield passes. He is, he's a mess. Like the, the, there is, there's not many ways out of Deshaun Watson right now for the Cleveland Browns. They will owe him 172 million in dead cap next year. If they tried if, to move if on, if they tried to move on or cut him. So there's all these rumors about, could they just, could they try to trade him to a team that has cap space so that that team, and you'd have to send your first round pick, which right now that's pacing to be what four overall. I don't think, uh, Wait, to get but, rid of $172 million. Right. He hasn't completed one pass longer than 30 yards this year. The last two weeks, he haven't, hasn't completed one over 19 yards. And you watch the game, and you see open players, and he misses them. Yeah, So you're, but you feel you feel the confidence in, in Amari Cooper, number one in air yards, a.k.a. prayer yards. <laughs> and then like what the running back here I feel confident in Cooper because you're facing an Eagles defense that gives up 37 yeah. and a half fantasy points to wideouts 31st right now and he and he is you know number four in targets and I think that you saw that work out in week two and you're gonna see it work out this week so and they're gonna be down yes they are, they, they will be playing catch up the running back position has been kind of all over the place but Deonta Foreman didn't practice on Wednesday. Uh, this is Nick Chubb will not be back yet. They is are we backed into another Jerome Ford is the workhorse running back? You're backed into flex Jerome Ford, yeah. Okay, that that's what I'm not saying. Yeah, this, I he's think not that's a priority fine, but start. I, you know, David Njoku, I I spoke yesterday about the fact that they were really encouraged. He's going to practice and he's not going to be on the injury report. That's a lie. That was all a lie. He didn't practice. <laughs> the team said they were optimistic. He he didn't practice at all. He was completely. Oh. Off the field. So now you got to monitor that. And I don't think I'd have the guts to throw him out here this week anyway. Okay. The Eagles shut down the tight end position in general. And we just don't need to mess around with an injured David Njoku who got back from injury, left early from injury. Let's just press pause on that. He should be rostered but not played. What do we do then with Dallas Goddard? Uh, because the Eagles should be back to full strength. Devontae, A.J. Brown, they were both full practices on Wednesday. So they're they're going to play. Dallas Goddard is getting the invisibility cloak from Harry he's, Potter. He's, putting si it back on. he's sized for him. Because weeks one and two, Goddard was five points, five points, and then had the huge games because of necessity. So it's Dalton Kincaid or Dallas Goddard. Can, I feel like that would be a real Dalton decision Kincaid. for people. Okay. I'm going Dalton Kincaid there. Yeah, I think Goddard, you know, if you look at his last 17 games played, 35% of the time he scores eight or more points. That's including the last two illustrious weeks. It, he was a beneficiary like, like of opportunity. Cade Otten or Dallas Goddard? Yeah, I'd probably just try to get Goddard in okay. there at that point in time. Get some upside. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. The story is those two guys returning for Jalen Hurts, which makes him a much more confident start. They're at home. It's against Cleveland. Um, Saquon, Hurts, Brown, Smith. Put them in? Absolutely. Yeah, that becomes a lot easier. They're also getting there. Right tackle, superstar Lane Johnson back. Kind of a big deal. Good luck, Cleveland. All right, Washington is 4-1. and one. The Ravens are 3-2. and two. The game's in Baltimore, and they're heavy favorites. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Ravens minus 6.5. The over-under is a beautiful, no majestic respect. 51 points. No respect for the 4-1 and one commanders. Is there snow in Vermont? Oh, That's my. what Google AI is telling me. Google AI is telling you. That, not that there is... You didn't just search for, is there ever snow in Vermont, right? Like active snowing? Active snowing. Okay. Someone wrote in, too. That is a That's problem. That's big news. If, uh, if you're new to the fantasy footballers, uh, the boys from the DFS betting podcast, Borg and Bets, they, had, they, uh, they discovered the secret of Derrick Henry somehow. I don't know what it's the- a snow model. I don't know what the correlation is, but somehow if it's snowing in Vermont- that always led to great games for Derrick Henry in Tennessee. Now, does that transfer? Now to that Baltimore? Yeah. Do, do the powers just move along, or do they stay in Tennessee? Like, is Tony Pollard? Is he new, the, the new snow model guy? Well, it's snowing in Vermont, so Tony Pollard just started the week. I don't hey. think that was a coincidence. <laughs> That's how I do all my analysis. Yeah, we're really top-notch here. No, Derrick Henry's a start no yeah. matter what. Um, 
He's got a rushing touchdown in every game. He's averaging 21 carries a game. That's carries, not touches. Carries in their wins. They're heavily favored. It's, and they're playing great football. He looks just like... like he looks like Derrick Henry. He just looks like Derrick Henry. Just it, with a different jersey. He's this. The man is... The man is thirty, almost thirty-one years old. He keeps he's himself wild. In, in decent he's wild. shape. Decent shape. Um, yeah, I've, I, maybe yeah, I was like one hundred and fifty. What he spends per year? Yeah, it was I, like a couple million dollars a year. or Something. Oh, uh, what I don't know if it was that maybe high. Maybe it wasn't that much. No, I was going to say like forty-five thousand, but maybe that's way too low. That's way too. There, low. But there was a story about how Derrick Henry. We spends, are really. Uh, it's a quarter million dollars. Per, okay, just put, it's, a, it's a quarter million dollars somewhere in the middle per year on body maintenance. That's wild. But if you're Derrick Henry, that's yeah, that's an investment. That's money well that's spent. That's an investment. Can you play any other player on this entire team than Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson I, on a team that has is is a implied point total of twenty eight and a half? I think that Zay Flowers is okay. Uh, it's not exciting. He's had double digit targets in three of five games, a twenty seven percent target share, and Washington, like they can score, they can't. But I'm saying they also can give up a lot of points to the. Uh, the wide receiver position, twenty seventh right now, Damn. and Zay Flowers should his play style should mix uh, very poorly for Washington because Flowers should be okay. The Washington defense is not good, and that is the team that Deshaun Watson could do nothing against. Yeah, that was what made yep. last week so demoralizing. So this week, do you believe that Jaden Daniels will do enough for your fantasy roster? Yeah. So yeah, you're good with Daniels. I am. the The Ravens are, they're weird. Their their defense is very, very weird. Of, I mean, you go an entire half of, uh, the the Bengals could do nothing really on offense. They just shutting them down, and then they give up tons and tons of points in the second half. It's like they can't. It's the second half. What is what's going on with the uh the cardio here, the, the training? We got to up it for the Ravens. I think the controversial take for me in this game would be sitting Brian Robinson down. And that's what I would do. I, I would not play him. I, I don't think that's a wrong decision. He's also if he's still banged up. He would yeah, he scored twice. Like if you played him last week, you got super bailed out by two touchdowns. I mean, because he and then they sat him down. But the his injury is it's a it's a real deal in the matchup of while the Ravens are giving up tons of points, it's not to the running back position. No, they give up points to the running back in the receiving game. That's an area you could target with Austin Eckler, who has looked awesome. He has. I don't think you were here Monday, but like you know, number no, I was one, not. number one in yards per carry in the NFL right now. Do you Eckler? know? Who, do you know who that is? No. Oh, oh, Bigsby's up Tank there. Tank Bigsby. Yeah. Number two is Eckler. So, if Brian Robinson's limited, only played thirty four percent of snaps, and Eckler catches the football, which is what they need to protect against the pass rush, I think that's interesting. Yeah. I don't um, so I think Eckler could be a flex type of play. Terry McLaurin, I mean, he you just play him. He he's in your lineup, and yep. then and then Zach Ertz is always a desperate eight targets for Zach Ertz. How did he turn eight targets into ten yards? Can someone explain this to me? I don't think it was all his fault. I watched the game because what? I needed him to have twenty five yards. <laughs> he got eight targets. Yeah, I mean, he got missed on a couple plays. Mm -hmm. But eight targets a tight end in this economy. Like, he, here's the real question: Mark Andrews or Zach Ertz, Mike? This week for sure, Zach Ertz. Okay, Isaiah Likely or Zach Ertz? That is much harder. Uh, I mean, I Likely had the huge game again, two touchdowns on three catches and 13 yards. So, I mean, again, Zach Ertz is not giving you a ceiling. I I think I feel confident saying that, but I'll probably just take the the, the points I could get from Hertz. Okay. That's so gross. Yeah. I um I understand. It it's a it's gonna be an interesting game because obviously if Washington competes in this game, that will be a statement. Yes, it will. This is this is a this is big boy time. All right. Um do we have any injury updates, guys? Do we have the lights back on, Inducers Alley? Oh, we do have the lights on. We do not have any updates. All right. Okay. Okay. And I still, I still think there's one forehead that's lit up over there, like the sun. Like that's not just a white T-shirt. Yeah, that's healthy skin. That's like the lighting is just 
Are, are you on? Are you hot right now? It's bright. It's bright. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now is that better? Now he's in the dark again. Yeah. Looking good. Um. All right. Listen. We we normally we normally celebrate uh, slash uh, dish out a parlay parte at this point in the show, which this past week Mike was uh very crowned up. Oh yeah. And then Jason over here, uh, which is Jay Grizz. <laughs> Jay Rizzler wearing the clown outfit the whole day. <laughs> we don't have a parlay parte for you today because uh, we we wanted to, but right at this moment in time and before the show, uh, unfortunately DraftKings is dealing with some I, I guess technical difficulties, mm -hmm. so we don't have game lines. Yep, we'll be back tomorrow though. But we're gonna try to get you that tomorrow. So just hang in, hang in there, and we will do that. That was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Tomorrow, more matchups, Mike. More matchups. The Fantasy Faceoff. But somehow I lost. I thought my team was doing so good. Were you surprised? Because you got out of town that yeah, day, right? I, yeah, I wasn't. I, I was not able to like track after like the... The morning games? Yeah, you got beat. <laughs> it was... You got beat. The big difference for me and you was I had I had upgraded the defense. Yeah. And our defensive gap was 19 points, so no, not to be underestimated. But you get to spin the wheel tomorrow. Congrats. Yeah, that's yeah, I deserve it. And I'm I'm trying to dodge this thing all year long. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I, I'm doing okay so far. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. We'll hit the fantasy face off. The rest of the matchups. We'll catch you up on any of these uh, important injury related pieces of news and of course you can go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com for a ton of free resources awesome articles from our writing staff oh, we start sit tool slight update slight here. uh brian dable said malik neighbors is in the same stage of the concussion protocol yesterday that's not great no it's not man that sucks he did get knocked straight out yeah yeah and they didn't do the josh allen treatment and just give him like a smelling salt and get him back into the game. Goodness gracious. Because he doesn't play quarterback. All right, that'll do it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.